Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. Stick around because today we are making the cutest bag ever. So a lot of you have asked me to do a video making a really large tote bag, kind of like an overnight bag, a weekend bag, something like that. So that is what we are going to be making today. We are going to be making this lovely quilted tote bag. Now, if this is your very first bag that you've ever made, you might want to go back and watch one of my other videos. I have a few bags that are a lot easier to put together. This one is not hard, but there are some curved edges on here that make it a little bit more challenging. And then we're doing binding all the way around it. So it's not difficult, but there are what I would call maybe, um, advanced beginner techniques. So in today's video, we're going to be putting together this one. Now it's just got this kind of plain side pocket, but I've also made a second version that has this really cute Dresden plate on the side pocket. And this is really easy. These instructions are going to be in the PDF written pattern. So if you like to download that one, there will be a link for that below this video as well. This bag also features this little ribbon tie closure. So it's super easy. And then I also added a little inside pocket as well, just to source more of your goodies. So this bag is going to finish about eight inches deep, 12 inches tall and 19 inches wide. So it's a really nice, good size overnight bag. So if you're interested in making it, let's go ahead and get started. So these are the, some of the supplies you're going to need for this project. And I will have exact cutting measurements and instructions below this video. So just click that um, show more link down there. I'm also going to have a PDF pattern for this as well. So you're going to start off with some fusible foam. I like to use foam for this project because it's just a little bit thicker than regular batting. Um, it just has a little bit more structure to it. And this is the in our form plus fusible stabilizer. And this is actually double sided fusible uh, stabilizer. So it's actually fusible on both sides, which makes it really handy for this project. I'm also going to be needing some fabric. So I've got some fabric for the bottom of my bag, the top kind of outside of my bag. I've got some side panel fabric. I've got some fabric for my side pockets. I've got lining, binding, and then an inside pocket fabric as well. Again, all the instructions um, for exact cutting measurements will be below this video. I also have some decorative ribbon. This is just for fun, totally optional. And these are actually the ribbons that come on my fat quarter bundles. Um, and I just like to keep them and I use them on fun projects like bags. So I have a few of those. And then I also have some basic sewing supplies. So I'm gonna be using Wonder Clips for this project today because of the foam stabilizer. Just makes everything a lot easier. I'm also gonna be using some cotton webbing for my straps so that we don't have to make fabric straps, but if you'd like to, you're welcome to make fabric straps. It actually doesn't really matter how thick they are. This is one inch cotton webbing. I'm also going to be using my rotary trimmer. Of course, I always have a ruler handy. And then I'm going to be using this handy little thing. Um, this is from Clover and it's actually like an ironing seam guide and it has a rounded corner on it. So I'm going to be using it for the rounded corner, but you can use anything to round your corners just as long as they're all the same. You can use a little spool of tape, anything that kind of has a nice little rounded edge. But I'll show you that when we get there. All right, I think that's it for this project. Of course, I'm gonna be using my sewing machine and some Aurifil 50 weight cotton thread. I think that's about it. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna start off by preparing our pocket because that's just the easiest thing and I just like to get it out of the way. So I'm gonna take my pocket and I'm gonna fold it in half, right sides together. And then I'm actually going to sew around the pocket on all three sides, but I'm gonna just leave about a two inch opening down here so that we can turn our pocket right side out. So here we have our sewn pocket and I'm just going to clip off these corners. Just be careful you don't clip into your stitch line because uh, that won't be very good. But I'm just going to clip away some of the corners so that I can turn it out a little bit easier. And then I'm just going to carefully put it through the opening. And this is why you backstitch at the stop and start of that opening because that way you have some strength there in your stitches and you don't accidentally tear them back open. And I'm just going to use my um, hair marker here just to kind of poke out these corners. Uh, you can also use a chopstick, uh, a pin that has like a cap on it, anything kind of pointy. Okay, so here we are and here's my little opening and I'm just going to press these edges in. Just kind of finger press them by one quarter of an inch. So here we are, I've just pressed it really nicely. And then here is my side with the opening. And so I'm just gonna take this over to my sewing machine now and just run a top stitch right along this top edge that's the folded edge. And that'll just signify it's our top edge. It also kind of just gives it a little bit of extra support there when we add it to the lining of our bag. 
Okay, so we're done with our pocket. We can just set that aside for now. And now we're going to prepare some of our actual bag pieces. So here are our three panels. This is gonna be our bottom panel and then these are our two top panels. And this is the stage where you're going to want to add your straps. So I've got my straps pre-cut here and all the instructions and links are gonna be in the description below this video. So I've placed my strap where I want it. For my bag, I'm doing five inches in from both sides and it makes it about six and a half inches um, apart here in the middle. So I'm just lining it up so it looks all nice and straight, but I am also using these little marks on my ruler right here so that I can kind of make sure that they look like they're even. Once I'm happy with where those straps are, I can lay this other piece down on top of there and I'm just lining up all those raw edges right there. And then I'll just use this clip to grab that and put that in place. And then we're gonna sew down this edge using a quarter inch seam allowance. And when we're done with this side, we're gonna repeat the same process on this other side. And I'm just gonna straighten this out here to make sure that my strap is straight. Okay, so here's kind of what it looks like for now. We're just gonna get that one out of the way and we're gonna do the same thing on this other side. And if you like, you can kind of put this up here like this. Just put a couple clips on there so you kind of know where they are so that they basically match. And then just make sure you're not twisting your straps when you're putting them on here. like so and then again we're going to put this panel right side down and I'm just going to sew exactly the same one quarter of an inch down this edge. So here is our finished outside of our panel and these straps are kind of in the way but they won't be for very long. The next step is just to press this and I'm actually going to press my seams so they're going towards the center of the bag. That'll actually push the straps so they're going towards the tops of the bag. And I just like to lay it nice and flat like that. I can feel it. And then you'll see that this seam actually kind of naturally lays towards the center of the bag. And then we'll do the same thing to the other side. So here's our outside finished panel. And now we're gonna prepare our foam pieces. And I like to just kind of do this all at once because I feel like it's just easier that way. So here are my side panels and I've got my lining pieces and my side panels. I have two of each, so two outsides and two linings. Here's my main outside panel and then here is my lining for the main panel. And then here are my two little side pockets. And these are just folded in half with wrong sides together so they're ready to go. So I like to just put my fusible foam with the item it's going to go with. So that goes with those. These side panels go with those. And then this big panel goes with these. So you're gonna wanna follow the instructions on your fusible fleece or your fusible lining for whatever, you know, whatever instructions it has for you. I have these cut just slightly smaller so you can see that there's a quarter, about a quarter of an inch or so around the outside edge of them. And that just makes sewing the bag itself together a little bit easier because you don't have so much bulk around all of those. And then I'm going to just follow the instructions per my fusible fleece. And this one you just press it with a warm iron and I kind of just move it around. I try not to leave it in one place because you can get just like kind of a crease mark in your foam that way. So. Um, and you are gonna wanna press this from both sides. I like to have the backing on there already just in case I don't want it fusing to my ironing pad here. But I do still press it from both sides. And then you can tell because it stays. And this is actually removable. So if for some reason you felt like you made a mistake, you can actually peel it back um, and then fix it and refuse it. But it will hold everything in place for the time being while we're getting ready to quilt. So I'm gonna go ahead and prepare all of my pieces the exact same way. So 
So here are our two outer pockets. We're just gonna set those aside and then I'm gonna show you how to do one of these other pockets or one of these other panels. So this is the side panel. So I'm gonna put my side panel lining right side down. One of my fusible fleece pieces on there and then one of my outside panels right side up. So basically you have the right side showing on both. You're just making a little sandwich here. And like I said, you are gonna have to flip this over and press it, the lining on as well, but I just don't wanna get it, the heat will kind of transfer through and I don't want it sticking to my ironing surface. So I just make the sandwich in advance and then I'll just carefully turn it over and it's not really stuck to it, but it is warm, I can feel it, so. So I'm gonna just prepare both panels this exact same way. Next, we're gonna do the big one and I would normally do this over on my ironing board just so I have a little bit more space. But I'm gonna lay my lining again, right side down, line up my uh, outside panel. I'm also gonna flip those straps to make sure this seam is going the correct direction. So I'm just gonna finish fusing this piece on and when I am done, I will meet you back here and we're gonna do a little bit of fun quilting to give this bag a nice personalized touch. So here are all of our panels and I've finished making my little quilt sandwiches. And as you can see, this foam is really nice and stable, just gives it some really good body. So our next step is to just have a little bit of fun and do some fun quilting on here. Now you can do free motion quilting, you can do straight line quilting. Um, you can really just do whatever you want. If you'd like, you can use a ruler and something like a friction erasable pin to draw some lines on to follow. Um, I'm probably just gonna wing mine um, and just have fun with it. I've actually already done a little bit of a sample here for you and and you can see that I just did some little crosshatch quilting on there. You can probably see it a little better on this backside. And I just put it on my machine and I usually go from like say corner to corner and then just try and make even increments <laughs> going in all directions. Uh, but you can do whatever you want for this. The only thing you're gonna wanna watch out for while you're quilting all of these panels is your straps. So for right now, just move your straps out of the way, quilt around them, do not sew over your straps. We're actually gonna sew those in place once our quilting is done. So just don't sew over your straps, but let's go ahead and quilt all of our panels, the outside, the two side edges, and our two pockets, and then I will meet you back here. So here are all my panels. They're all nice and quilted and ready to go. And then the other thing that I did was I just ran a quick zigzag stitch right around the edges. Now this is totally optional and if you don't have a zigzag stitch on your machine, don't worry about it. Um, I just feel like it makes the panels just a little bit easier to deal with uh, when we start assembling the bag and you don't have, you know, fabric flopping around or anything. So if you would like to run a zigzag stitch right around the edge, I just did a standard stitch and I think it was about a 1.2 stitch length on my zigzag. So now that all of those are done, we're gonna do one more little step and this is optional, um, but I am going to take my outer pockets and I'm going to put some binding on them. So I just have two little strips of binding here. And like I said, this is completely optional. You do not have to do this. I just think it gives it a kind of fun little pop and it's gonna match the other binding we're putting on our bag. So here's an up close of my pocket and these three sides are the ones that I did a zigzag stitch on. This is my top edge where it's folded. I did not zigzag stitch that. I'm just going to place my binding right side down on there and I'm just gonna stitch it using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then we'll fold it up and then fold it in and around the other side and stitch it back down. So I'll show you that a little bit closer uh, at the machine, but I'm gonna do that on both of these outer pockets. So here are our finished pockets. They're all ready to go. I've got my binding added and it just looks nice and I think it gives it a little pop of color. The next thing we're gonna do is round just the bottom edges of our side pockets um, and panels and I'm just gonna do them together so that they match up. So I'm placing my raw edges together on both of these. And then I'm gonna use this little clover um, seam guide 
to round my corners. But like I said earlier in the video, you can use anything that you want that's kind of just got a nice rounded edge. And I'm just gonna place it down here on the corner of one of my panels and then just draw right around that. And I'm gonna do that on both corners. And I'm just rounding the bottom edges. We don't want to round the top. These ones up here, we're just gonna leave square. And then next we're going to take our scissors and I'm just gonna cut right around those edges. And I'm just gonna cut them together. Okay, and I just want to just make sure that they're nice and even. And then like I said, we're gonna just leave these top corner edges um, square. Now I've just pinned these in place and I'm gonna take them over to my sewing machine and I'm just gonna do a basting stitch right around these three edges. Of course, leave the top of your pocket open. I just think it's a little bit easier to have the pocket secured to the side panel before we start putting our bag together. Okay, so now we have our pockets attached to our side panels. We can just set these out of the way for a minute. Okay, next we're gonna work on our outer panel and we're going to secure our straps so that they are not flopping around on us anymore. And so I am just going to take my pins here and just make sure that my strap is nice and straight. And I'm just gonna kind of pin it in place. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. That way it's not gonna be moving around on us. We're gonna take it to our sewing machine and I'm gonna sew right up this edge and I'm gonna stop at about an inch and a half from the top up here. So I'll put a little stopping pin in there. And then I'm gonna go across and then down the other side. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. I'm also gonna do the same thing on this one. So just make sure your straps are nice and straight then you can put your little stopping pin in there. Okay, so let's take this over to our sewing machine. We're gonna sew up the edge, just like an eighth of an inch inside of this edge, across and then back down. And I am gonna backstitch at my stops and starts. So here's our finished outside and we've got our straps nice and secured so they're not flopping around on us as much anymore. Now we're going to flip this over to the back side and as you can see, you can see where your handles were stitched on. So next we're going to attach our pocket and we're going to place our pocket so that the folded edge is going towards the top of our bag and then the edge that has our little opening is going towards the center of our bag and I'm actually just going to center it right in between these stitch lines on our handles and then making sure that the bottom of the pocket kind of goes just a slightly, let's do like two and three quarters inches down, okay? And then this way when we sew these on, I'm still using the white thread, so it's actually gonna give our straps a little bit of extra strength. It's also going to be hidden. You're not gonna be able to see that stitch line where this pocket is. So I'm just gonna throw a couple pins in there just to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna take it over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna sew down all these three sides. I'm gonna backstitch at my stop and start. And when I get down here, I'm just gonna make sure that I'm stitching over that opening and closing it up nicely. So here we have our pocket, it's nicely secured, and then we're gonna flip our panel back over like this, and then we're gonna add our decorative trim. You don't have to do this step, but it helps hide your pocket, and also I just think it's super cute. So I've got these two pieces of Moda ribbon, and I'm just going to lay them right along this seam, and I'm actually kind of centering it so that the seam is kind of centered on my ribbon. And you can pin that in place if you like, you can just add it on. Mine actually has some words on it here. It says Moda. So I'm going to make sure that the words are right side up. And then I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and just using about an eighth of an inch stitch uh, seam allowance, I'm going to just sew right down 
both of these edges to secure my ribbon to my bag. Just gives it kind of a cute little extra touch. And see, there we have a cute little decorative ribbon. Not only does it kind of hide that seam, so it makes the seam a little more fun, it also adds a little bit of strength to our handle and it helps hide the pocket seam. So, all right, I think we're done preparing. So now it's time to start putting our bag together. Now, the first thing that I want to do is fold my bag in half, right sides together. And I'm just gonna mark where this center is with a little wonder clip. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. So now we have our center pieces marked and I'm gonna go ahead and just flip this over so that our lining side is showing up. And next we're going to add our signed panels. But before we do that, I do wanna just take my scissors really quickly and I'm just gonna put a couple of little clips around this corner. It's gonna help it um, kind of stretch just a little bit. Just make sure that you don't cut into your seam allowance. Okay, and I'm, so I'm just gonna kinda clip a few around that edge. I'm gonna do that on this one. And I'm just putting little clips in there just so that this fabric can bend a little bit easier around those corners. And then where those corners hit down here, we're gonna do the same thing, okay? But I don't know where that is yet. So first, I'm going to take my pocket and fold it in half like this. And we're gonna make sure that lining is touching lining. So there's my center. I'm gonna put it lining down so that our lining is touching each other. And then now I can kind of see about where this bag is going to cut around that corner. So now I can just go ahead and throw a few clips in there. And I am clipping through my little zigzag stitches and that's okay. This is just gonna help it go around that, bend around that corner a little bit easier. Okay, and then I'm gonna turn it around so I can reach the other side here. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay, now that we have our side panels clipped in place, it's time to start clipping the side panels up the sides. And I find it easiest to just pull up one panel and just line up the top corner with that. Again, make sure that your lining edges are touching each other. And I'm gonna put a clip at this top. And I'm actually gonna turn it so it's easier for me to see here. Then I'm just gonna start clipping down the sides. And then when I get to this corner, that fabric and all those little clips we did should kind of just bend together nicely. And I'm just gonna throw a couple clips around that corner. Just hold everything in place. All right, so that's one side. And then we're coming down along the bottom. And then we're gonna pull up our other side. And again, just meet that top edge like so. Clip the top edge, move it so that all of those side edges line up and I'm gonna add some more clips and I'm gonna do this to the other side as well. And just kind of tuck that corner in there. And I usually put a couple extra clips around the corner because I feel like it just needs it. All right, so that's one side and you can now see how our bag is looking. Okay, now we're gonna do the other side. Okay, so here we have basically our bag. And now these top edges, I just wanna quickly say, these top edges should line up if you sewed everything nice and straight. If something got off kilter, a little wonky, if that happens, don't worry about it. Line it up starting down here like we did and just pin it up this way until you get to the top. And then if either your bag or your side is um, not even, we can just trim that later. So just make sure that the bottom edges all line up and then we can trim off the top later if it's not perfect and we need to so don't worry about that okay so i'm going to take this now over to my sewing machine and i'm just going to sew so all the way around this side and i'm going to use about a 3 8 inch seam allowance so somewhere between a quarter and a half of an inch i'm not going to measure it i'm just going to eyeball it but i just want to make sure that i'm getting all of my layers in my stitch line Now when I get down to the edge of the corner, I'm going to just make sure that I'm pushing my bag bottom out of the way and I'm just going to carefully go around that corner just nice and slow. And then once I wait, make it around the corner, then I can kind of pull the rest of the bag out of the way, straighten everything out and keep on going.
So this is what our bag should be looking like. We sewed on our first side panel here. It looks nice and neat. And just take your time around these corners um, and just go nice and slow and just make sure that you're not sewing over the bottom of the bag at all. So just make sure that everything's out of the way as you're going. And then I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that on this side over here. And then I will meet you right back here. All right, here we are. We've got both of our sides sewn all the way on and it's at this stage that I just stick my hand in there, run it all along that seam and just make sure that I did indeed, oh, see, look at right here, that I did indeed get all of my layers in my seam. It's really easy, especially on these corners um, to you know, let it get a little bit out of kilter and not quite catch that. So I'm just gonna bring this right back over to my machine, fix it really quickly, and then we'll be good to move on to our next step. All right, we just need to add a couple pieces of binding and we'll be done with this project. Now, because these are, you know, kind of rounded seams right here, you're gonna wanna create bias binding. And I do have a video that goes into a little bit more detail, but I am gonna show you how to do it in this video as well. So here is our piece of binding, and this is a little bit bigger than a fat quarter but that's what you're gonna want about a fat quarter um, for your binding. We're just gonna take this bottom corner, we're gonna fold it up along this top edge, just like that so that we have a triangle. Just gonna make sure that that top edge is straight and then I'm gonna get my ruler and just cut off this excess piece. And we can save that for another project. Next, we're gonna take this bottom edge of our triangle here and we're gonna fold it up to the top left corner so that we now have this size of a triangle. This is gonna be a lot easier to manage and just make sure that all your fabric is nice and straight in here and you don't have any puckers or creases in there because that will mess up your binding. Next we're gonna take this and just turn it to the right so that we now have a 90 degree angle, looks like an L. And so these are our two folded edges over here. This is our raw edge here, and then this is like a single folded edge, okay? Just so that you can orient yourself. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is just cut off these double folds over here because we do not need those. So I'm gonna line up my ruler with the bottom edge of my fabric right there, and then I'm just gonna trim off and take that fabric away. Okay, now we have two raw edges over here and we're just going to go ahead and cut our binding. And for this project, I'm just using one and a half inch binding. You can use whatever binding size you prefer. I just think that this works nicely. And I apologize for you know, OCD people out there. I know my cutting is not quite going straight with my binding, but in the end, it's not gonna matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim off a one and a half inch piece. Okay, and then I'm just gonna keep doing that until I run out of fabric. All right, now that we're down here to this one, I'm not gonna bother cutting this one off. I will put this in my scrap pile and to just use it for something else. All right, so now we have a bunch of different sizes of binding strips and they're double because we folded our triangle in half. So I've got all of these strips here. And I like to, when I'm sewing these together, I like to sew my strips kind of alternating like a long one with a short one. That way I don't just have a bunch of short strips when I get towards the end of my project. Okay, so I have arranged my strips just so they're in alternating size order. So if you grab the one wrong, wrong one, it's not a big deal. So we're gonna start sewing these strips together. And the way I remember it is that if my uh, diagonal line is pointing up, then the strip I'm gonna add is also going to be going up. So we're gonna place them right sides together we're gonna line up these diagonal lines just like this and so that we can kind of make an L. So the up one makes sort of a backward L and our edges are gonna be overlapping by one quarter of an inch. So my little kind of ears here are sticking out one quarter of an inch. And we're gonna just sew right along this diagonal line using a quarter of an inch seam. And when we sew right there and then press that, you can see that we've now made a nice straight strip of binding. And we're gonna do that all the way around. And we're gonna do that same technique every time we add a new strip. So if our diagonal line is pointing up, then our new strip is going to also be going up. Now just make sure you grab the right end because as you can see here, this angle is going the opposite direction as this one. And so you just need to flip your strip over and then you have your angles going the same way, okay? So now let's pretend like we've sewn that on. We're gonna press 
that going straight, and now my diagonal line is pointing down, which means that the next strip that I add is actually going to be going down. Now again, I can look at my edges here and realize that those are the wrong way, so I just need to turn it around so that my diagonal lines are going the same direction. Okay, and again, I'm going to overlap these little points by one quarter of an inch, and then we'll sew down this one. And then again, we've got a strip. And we're just going to continue adding our strips like that until we have one big long strip of binding. All right, so I'm just going to grab all my strips and kind of bring them over next to my sewing machine here, and we're going to start sewing all of these strips together. Make sure that they're overlapping by a quarter of an inch. And then we're just going to carefully turn that. All right, now I'm just grabbing the other end of this strip here, and now my point is going down, so I know that my next strip that I'm adding needs to come down, and this is not the right side, so I'm just going to turn it over. There's the right side, and I'm going to add. And it'll be opposite, so each row you add will be, one row will be up, one row will be down. Okay, so here is our finished strip and we have all of our little diagonal seams there. So the next thing to do is just to press those. And don't pull on it too much. I'm actually just pressing these all to one side. You can totally do whatever you're more comfortable with. It really doesn't matter. You can press them open if you like. So I'm just gonna press these seams all the way down this row of binding. So here is one of my press strips. Now, as you'll notice, one of the edges folds down nicely. The other one's gonna have this little kind of dog ear on it. So I'm just going to grab my scissors and we'll just chop those off all the way down our strip just so that we don't have those in our way. Okay, so here we are. We've got our bag that's basically sewn together. We just need to add binding. Here is my binding and I've cut two pieces off of that that are 40 inches long. Now that's more than we're going to need, um, but I just like to have a little bit of extra just in case because you never know. Now if your bag tops did not line up perfectly, now would be the time to just trim them. And you can just lay this flat and just kind of with your scissors just trim them off so that they kind of match up so that the top edge of your bag is perfectly in line. Next, we're going to take one of our side pieces of binding. I'm just going to set the other one aside. And then this is, again, our leftover binding. This is going to go around the top of our bag. So we can just set that aside for now. We're just going to work on one side at a time. And so I am just going to take this binding and line it up right along this top edge, like so. And I'm just going to kind of pin it in place. Okay, so here's what it should be looking like. We're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and just sew all the way down this edge and back up to the top edge. And I like to just pin it around just to make sure that I have enough binding and I didn't like mess up when I was cutting it or anything like that. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll meet you right back here. Okay, so our binding is attached to one side now. And then it actually doesn't really matter which, whether you put it on the pocket side or the outside first. Just make sure whatever you did on one side, you do on the other side. Um, but otherwise, it doesn't really make too big of a difference. All right, now I can just trim off this excess. Save that for another project. And then next, we're going to grab our Wonder Clips. And you really are going to want to kind of clip this down. So you can kind of fold your binding over the edges like so. And next we're going to just take it, and you can press this too if you like, I'm not going to, but you're just gonna take it and press the rod of your binding in so it meets the rod of your bag, and then fold it around to the other side like this. Now if you feel like this is too tight, you can always just scoot this edge out just a little bit. Don't fold it, don't, you know, instead of folding it so far over, just fold it in a little bit less, and then fold it over the edge. You basically just wanna make sure that this folded edge of your binding is just on the outside of your previous stitch line here. 
That way you won't be stitching into the other side of your binding. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this all the way around and just fold that under and add my binding clips. And I do add, I don't normally do clips when I'm doing binding like for quilts and stuff, but for bag projects like this, I do um, like to use these clips. It just helps keep things kind of straight and organized as you're going, especially when you get down to these corner edges. And then here's where the, um, the stretchy binding is really gonna shine because it's just gonna fold right around this corner, just like butter. And again, fold it in half. And then you can just clip that in place. And we're gonna do that all the way around this edge. And I just really like um, doing binding like this on the outside of this bag because I just think it's so cute and it just kind of makes your bag pop. Gives it a little bit extra flair. If you don't like seeing this binding, um, instead of sewing it together the way we did, you can actually attach your side pieces exactly the opposite so your raw seams are on the inside and then you can do the um, binding on the inside um, using the lining fabric and you won't even really notice it. But I think it's just really cute to have it on the outside like this. Okay, so here we are and I'm just gonna take this now over to my machine and just stitch closed, just stitch right along the edge of this binding, just as close as I can all the way around just to secure it. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna repeat that same exact process on this other side of our bag. Okay, so here we are and our side panels are all nice and done and they look just really professional and cute. So our last step is to add the binding to the top of our bag and we're gonna do it in the exact same way. However, we're gonna go all the way around and then join back up right here. So I have a little trick for you on this that makes it a little bit easier and you don't have to do any measuring or cutting. So we're going to first take our binding strip just like we did before and lay it right side down, somewhere in the middle here. So this is what it's gonna be looking like. We're gonna tape, take this top corner and just fold it down so it's like a little triangle like that. And then just clip that in place. Okay, and you can kind of finger press it. And what that's gonna do is when our next piece comes, we're just gonna lay it right over the top of this. And when we fold it over, we'll have a nice finished edge right here. Okay, so just create that little triangle and then let's go ahead and start attaching our binding. We're gonna go all the way around the outside of the bag using about a quarter inch to a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now when we get to this first bump in here, um, I'm just going to, I'm just kind of do my best to just kind of flatten it out, put the binding on top of it and keep going. So as you can see, we're back to our starting point. So I'm gonna overlap this by about two inches or so just so that we can kind of hide this seam. And now I can cut this extra piece off. And then here we have our little overlap, okay? And so this is gonna be really nice and easy. We're just gonna fold this over like this and then flip it to the other side and just pin that in place. And that's our nice little seam right there and we don't have any raw edges and we don't have to worry about you know measuring and sewing the binding together and all of that. So now that we have that seam done, we can go ahead and finish folding it up and over the edge all the way around the outside of our bag. All right, so I finished pinning my binding all the way around and then the next thing to do is to add our little ribbon ties. And I've actually cut my ribbon so that one of the edges has this nice little um, diagonal angled line on it. The other side is just straight. And so I'm going to take one of these and I'm just going to pin it underneath the binding on the inside of the bag. So I'm just gonna slip it right up inside of there and I'm just going to put it um, as best center as I can. I'm just gonna slip it right up there and then pin the binding right on top of it. And you can measure center 
Or like what I kind of do is just fold it in half and just make sure that my ribbon is basically in the center. And then wherever I put it on one side, I will just find that same spot on the other side and do the same thing. And just slide it right up there in our binding. It's nice and slick, just like that. So now when we're sewing our binding on for the second time, we're also including these cute little um, ties for the inside. That way we can tie our bag together and keep all our items nice and secure in our bag. And now we're just going to take this over to our sewing machine and we're just gonna sew just like we did with our other side bindings right down this open edge, making sure when we get to our little ribbons that they're in there nice and straight and we just sew right over those. You can even go back, back stitch on them once if you wanna just make sure they're extra secure and just sew all the way around the outside of the bag and then we will be done with this project. Here we have our finished bag. I do like to just press these edges right here where the corners are. That'll just give it kind of a nice crease and I'll just press that with my iron a little bit. Um, and then that way your bag will stand up nice and neat. And of course you can tie it with a cute little bow in here, fill it with all kinds of goodies and you're good to go. So that is it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this bag project. As you can see, it really wasn't too difficult. The corners just take a little bit of finessing and just take a little bit of extra time. Otherwise, I think this bag is actually pretty easy to make. I think the longest part really is the quilting and the binding, and those just give it an extra little added pop, so I think it's definitely worth it. And then like I showed at the beginning of the video, I also have a pattern. This is the exact same bag, but I just did a fun little Dresden plate here on this side, and that will be included in the PDF pattern download, which will be linked below this video. So you can definitely go and check that out. And then because I know some of you are going to be asking, my next project will be a similar size bag, but we're gonna do a zipper enclosure. So it's actually gonna zip around so that you can take it for like a weekend bag or a little travel bag. Um, so I think that will be perfect. But I wanted to start off with this tie closure. I think it's a little bit easier. The next bag will take it up a notch and add a zipper. So stay tuned for that video. And as I mentioned before, if you'd like the PDF for this bag, you can get that in the description box below this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. That way I know to keep making fun tutorials for you. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you next time. <laughs> oh my gosh. <sighs> Good times. Good times.